Uh, greetings and uh, welcome to another episode of Crime Page by Bonnie and Dozen. Oh, nice Madrone. Nice Arbutus Halopensis up there. Got tons of good stuff. Here we are at about 7,800 7, feet in a beautiful, uh, what state are we in? Is it Morelos? Yep, Morelos. We're at 2,400 meters here. And we're going to go look for a species of Psilocybe. My favorite species of Psilocybe. One of the prettiest Psilocybe up at the Corum. One of the Derumbes. So called, uh, the Rumbe is Spanish for landslides, so called because it uh, tends to come up in landslides. As you can see, this habitat's very steep. We are in a Mexican transvolcanic belt, which exists solely because of uh, that Cocos plate sliding, subducting beneath the North American plate. So we got a lot of elevation, a lot of steep elevation, and uh, a lot of landslides. So we're going to go check out the, we're going to check out this native species of uh, psychoactive mushroom that comes up on the landslides as well as some of the, some of the plants that grow around here. Like this uh, beautiful red fuzzy bean. Okay, it said red fuzzy bean is Phaseolus coccinius, and it's quite common in central Mexico. My man Robert Kelly says you could eat the flowers, and I trust him because he's a handsome dapper fuck. But look at it. What a beautiful goddamn plant. Probably Hummer pollinated too, those red flowers. Now, you know, as far as parasites go, Psittacanthus has a lot going for it, okay? It's evolved hummingbird pollination, as you can tell from those orange tubular flowers. They're quite beautiful. And uh, they get around, so they're bird dispersed, bird pollinated, and uh, they're doing very well up here where they're native, in this uh, foggy forest at about 9,000 feet, growing on his oak. Sitacanthus, the member of the tropical mistletoe family, Loranthaceae, which you also get in Australia and many other places in the southern hemisphere. Let's take a closer look at the flower. Okay, so I just went ahead and broke a little branch off of uh, this oak right here. You can see it. Just thick and bulbous, growing right out of the stem of this oak. Looks like Quercus rugosa, but Mexico's got like nearly 300 species of goddamn oak, so who knows? He said it's fine, though. You know, I'm actually doing him a favor. Now, these don't actually kill the tree, and maybe they weaken it, but, you know, moisture's abundant here. Uh, you know, they don't, they don't seem to have too much of an impact. You never see them really overtaking any of the trees that they can grow on. Some will grow on pines. Many grow on oaks. Oh, that oak's got a lot of uh, poison ivy growing on it, too. Let's look at the flowers acidicanthus right here look at that showy bastards take one back you got all those recurved petals with the stamens come on right out the petals the stamens adnate to those petals in there look at it look at it what look a parasite but very pretty you got those yellow anthers on there and uh and then there's of course the ovary at the base kind of like a, i guess you'd call it like a half inferior half superior you know the the fruit and the ovary same thing basically uh just matured here at the base of the flower it looks like uh, you got like a nectar thief some kind of bee maybe going in there peeling the petals off of the sitacanthus nice but you know sitacanthus you'll see them showy as hell up there in the oak trees you know just doing their thing fancy bastards that they are again loranthaceae very cool family a lot of cool members of loranthaceae right get them in uh in south africa australia like i said neotropics they get around See this? So you got five stamen style in the center and then uh, six petals. Not sure what the shit's going on there. Look at it. Looks like one of those one of those uh, stamens is the uh, petal that's adnate to it splits into two. Fancy bastard. Look at it. But it can also do photosynthesis on its own as well. But it's going to steal a little bit from the oak. Much prettier than the mistletoe family you see in the United States, which is Viscaceae. Same order as Loranthaceae. Okay, Santa Lely's, they're both in the same order, but uh, 
but our you know North American United States temperance zone mistletoes never get as showy as this guy. Look at that. Oh, and here we go. Here's another here's another banger plant uh, from the higher elevation foggy forests uh, of Mexico. Again, I think we're like 7,000 feet right here. Anyway, this is a uh, Bomaria, Bomaria, ed Bomaria edulis, family's Alstromeriaceae, after the genus Alstromeria, which is also in that family. Alstromeria is a common. Uh, it's a common flower in bouquets in a grocery store and with the shit, but don't let that cause you to be prejudiced against it. Alstromeri is a pretty fucking incredible genus. You get a lot in Chile and other countries in South America up there in the Andes. This one, Bomaria edulis, you find in Mexico. Uh, it's a, like I said, it's a monocot. It's a member of the order of lilies, liliales, all right, the true lilies. Flowers uh, smell pretty incredible. It can be a, a, a quite a large vine, you know, going up a tree and with the shit. See that parallel venation hinting at its status as a monocot. Then we're going to split that uh, flower open. You see the six stamens and, of course, that that three-lobed style in there. All right, a lot of cool species of Bomaria. I remember finding some really cool ones in Chile. Look at that. Some of these Phaseolus species, get, they get those twisted keels in there. See that? How it spins around like that? Alan, do you got a favorite species of fuzzy bean? Huh? Favorite no? species of fuzzy bean? Fuzzy bean. Bean. No. Okay, Alan, now as we were coming into this little enclave, you said something about the habitat looking good. What did you mean by that? So we have a lot of moss here, a very steep ravine with lots of humidity, have a waterway right here. So, you know, you have this kind of habitat. It's really good for Psilocybe zapatocortum. Because you got these steep canyon walls, it's wet as hell. You get the mossy moss on the sides and shit and lots of humidity. Okay, well, I was coming down that hill whether I wanted to or not, so I just slid down. Plenty of uh, Toxicodendron radicans up top to poison ivy, so you gotta watch out for that. Look at those beautiful vines. I wonder if that's a Toxicodendron too. I don't know. I grabbed something to break my fall. Hopefully, it wasn't the poison ivy. Oh, beautiful Adiantium. Look at that. Huh? See, plenty of trash here at the bottom of the canyon. A couple plastic bags, pop bottles. Okay, so and we, this we found this growing on the side, coming out the side of the canyon right there. What is it? This is Armillaria mexicana, and you can tell because it's a relatively small honey mushroom, and it's got this ring here and white spores. You can tell it's white spores because you see this kind of like white powder. So a lot of these are edible, right? Yeah, this is edible. And same genus as the the honey mushrooms you see coming up at the base of trees, like in a city. Yep. Tons of them, you know, like three dozen coming up in a large, large clump. Yep. Oh, look, we got a kofia over there. Yeah, Same awesome. family as uh, pomegranates, Lithraceae. Look at that, showy flowers. Fuzzy as hell, look at it. They get the purple anthers. What the shit? Same family as purple loosestrife. Purple loosestrife, just coming off right there. Just tailing off, spilling off the cliff like that. So we didn't have to go too far, you know. I'm sitting here taking pictures of this kofia, expounding... Uh, internally and the uh, you know the the nuances of uh, lithraceae and what perhaps what the adaptive benefit of those two little blue looking purple purple looking flags up top of that corolla are very very uh, detailed corolla morphology and then it turns out down here we got uh, our target fungus psilocybe zapatocorum okay living up to its name is a Darumbe growing out of the vertical wall with all the mossy moss and shit. Beautiful patina right here. Beautiful color pal palette. If I were ever to be an interior designer, which I probably <laughs> won't, I'd probably get, I can't imagine how many times I'd be thrown out of people's houses. But regardless, look at that. That's, and that's, a, th those are small. These are just, these are just starting. Alan, why don't you tell us about uh, this, uh, this species of uh, psilocybe? So this one's really cool because it has this scurfy stem. So it has Flacos mycelium almost all the way up the stem. And it really likes to grow on these vertical walls, especially near water. So Flacos like the shaggy stuff coming off the stipe right there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's got a really unique stem texture. And they're one of the strongest psilocybin mushrooms, maybe the strongest. Uh, all the literature says that uh, psilocybe as, uh, azurescens is the strongest psilocybin mushroom. But Jordan Jacobs analyzed one of my collections from Vita Cruz with HPLC recently and found 2.6% alkaloids. So that's uh, 0.6 stronger than uh, the psilocybin. So 2.6% psilocybin. 
psilocybin and psilocin. Psilocin, which is what... But in here, it's really all psilocybin because these uh, the cells in the fungi have a repair mechanism that turns psilocin back into psilocybin immediately. So it's really all psilocybin here. It's not till you like pick it and damage it that you get any psilocin. Because psilocin is technically what's psychoactive to humans, right? It's not right. the psilocybin. And it's much less stable than psilocybin. Okay. And that's why you see the bluing in a lot of these uh, the species in this genus. Yeah, the bluing is this uh, polymerization of psilocybin. Uh, not, not the polymerization of psilocybin, the polymerization of psilocin. So psilocybin is the storage mechanism, and so it stores the psilocybin, and then when it's ready to deploy it, they dephosphorylate it and polymerize it. And it's thought that maybe this, uh, this polymer, which has a blue color, uh, kind of affects the insects and makes the insects sick. So it's probably not the psilocybin or psilocin. That's the anti-insecticidal pro property, but the polymer. Okay, so we got some more Zapatocorums uh, behind you, but what are these right here? These are really cool. This is a species of Lyophilum. So Lyophilum is a very poorly studied genus. It's edible. It's got white spores. There's a little Zapatocorum right next to it. Look at it! But I've never seen Lyophilum in, in this habitat here. This is this is pretty cool way down here in this barranca. So it looks like this was this just carved out by a by a by a stream basically by a good rain or what? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So this is not this is not a place you'd want to be during a rain. You no. probably get uh, inundated in a deluge. It oh, yeah. rains pretty much every afternoon. Are these zips so right here? Some of the most dangerous mushroom hunting. What is, is what is that? Is that a zip? No, it's not a zip, not. is it? Let's see it. This looks like uh, the spores are turning pink. So this is something in the Entelometaceae, maybe Nolania. Both saprotrophs, though, right here. The Lyophilum might be Ectomycorrhizal. See how it's going right on some roots there? Oh, look at that. I didn't even see that. Look at that. It's got a beautiful texture to that, the, the base of that stipe. What's going on there? They're just all coming out kind of like a lumpy stipe. So we're looking over here, you can see oh, that's the trash pile. That's a nice trash pile, isn't it, Alan? Looks like they put some work into that, huh? They <laughs> sure did. And uh, here we've got the Zappos. You could see the blue color in there, and it would be what? What is that blue? Explain to everybody watching what that blue, that bluish color might be. That blue color is a psilocin polymer. So the mushrooms don't have psilocin in them. They just have psilocybin. But there's some enzymes that quickly dephosphorylate the psilocybin when it gets damaged and then quickly polymerize the psilocin. So the psilocybin gets dephosphorylated into psilocin. The psilocin gets polymerized. And that is the polymer that the, some of the researchers are beginning to suspect is uh, the reason that the mushrooms have psilocybin. Right. So what would you say to any hippies who want to say that psilocybin was, you know, evolved for humans to do their shamanic trance, to listen to shamanic trance and wear goofy clothing and dance around and shit. What would you say to them? Uh, I would say the mushrooms have been here for millions of years longer than the humans have. Um, and that's also the case with peyote and pretty much any other psychoactive organism. Right. These compounds didn't evolve for us. No. You're saying. But there we go, trying to be anthropocentric again and think everything was... So what is the, what's the adaptive benefit of uh, psilocybin and psilocin? So there's no benefit that we know of of psilocybin or psilocin. The psilocybin is a storage mechanism uh, to be able to store psilocin. Um, that, so the psilocybin can quickly be um, dephosphorylated into psilocin, and then the psilocin can quickly be polymerized into those blue polymers. But what's the, what's the adaptive benefit to the mushroom? No one knows for sure, but it's suspected that these uh, blue polymers interfere with uh, insects or slugs. So maybe they stop um, these insects and slugs from eating the mushroom before it can generate its spores. Okay, so it's for the, for the bugs, basically. It could be. It's probably, but we don't know for sure. We don't know for sure, but it could be for the bugs. Mm -hmm. But it's probably not because aliens came down here and put the psilocin inside the mushroom, right? Right, and it's also not that the psilocybin or psilocin makes the bugs trip. It's more like it, they just have these alkaloids so it can make these polymers, and then the polymers um, are not psychoactive but have an effect on the insects. Maybe slugs. they suppress the appetite or something? or Yeah, or gum up the digestive system. Nicest trash pile I've ever been to here. Now, what are these? That looks like it might be an ascomycete, huh? Yeah, that's an ascomycete, probably philipsia. Jesus Christ, look at the color on those. And those are yeah. saprotrophs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. That can make a good spore. And you see the sunbeam, you can see some of the spores um, in the sunbeam. Those beam were the there. spores coming off of it right yeah. there. Look at that. 
Oh, look at this. Oh, my God. Look. Oh, we're getting dusted. I just got a bunch of loads blown in my face. Fuck. That's amazing. You can see the spores are white, too. It's just a white cloud that came out. And so that's those are the ASCII, of course, right? Yeah, the ASCII fire those spores out. Okay, so moving on through this uh, little slippery mini Kenyatta. Oh, fuck. God damn it. We could see. So these are all Psilocybe Zapatacorum so right here. This is all Zapatacorum in here. And you could see quite a bit of uh, bruising blue on the stem as well. Yeah, I just love the stem texture. Look at the these. stipe on it. Oh my and then god. Look at, look at this that one. beautiful how... spiral. Yeah, Shaggy awesome. spirals. That's actually, that could be like a terrible hippie name, couldn't it? <laughs> and then when you have a couple uh, goring together here, if you move one, you can see the spore print. So that's the, the spore print from the, the cap next to it. It's the brown so it's spores. Dark purple brown spore print. And look at this whole community of mosses and probably some cyanobacteria and ferns coming up. And, and human trash and whatnot. Look, there's a there's a beautiful there's your money shot right there. Look at that. Psilocybe zapatacorum coming up uh, amidst the human garbage pile. They just I guess they just throw it from the top of the cliff back you know up there. Oh, there's trash. They got some weird jelly fungus coming out of that uh, plastic bag over there. Okay, so so Alan, how many different species of uh, the rumbe, the landslide mushrooms that come up on these vertical rock walls uh, or, or dirt walls, are there? There's four species in Mexico. Here we have the Psilocybe zapatacorum, which is an in intermediate elevations. We're at 2,400 meters here. Up around 3,000 to 3,500 meters, I see a lot of Psilocybe mulircula. So that's the high elevation dirumbe, and that's closely related to this. And then at lower elevations, we have Psilocybe serulescens and Psilocybe hugshigenii, and both of those are phylogenetically close to Psilocybe mexicana. Oh, no shit. And Psilocybe mexicana comes out of uh, grass mostly, right? It comes yeah, out of like... Yeah, it's a grass species. So, so these, just because they both grow in the same habitat, all those, or all, all four of those species grow in the same habitat, doesn't mean that they're closely related phylogenetically. Exactly. This one's pretty close to Malircula. And then the other two are off by Mexicana. And so. so what are they doing? They're just eating a bunch of uh, decaying plant material, leaves, roots and shit, and the side of this dirt wall or what? Yeah, down at the bottom of the canyon, all of the twigs and sticks and leaves that fall off of the trees all make it down here and get mixed into the mud. And then they're kind of half decomposed by the time the Zapatacorum eats them. Do you think, do you think that the mushroom knows that it's got this habitat because of the Mexican transvolcanic belt and it's abducting Cocos Plate? I don't think the mushroom knows anything about that. Um, but it Am is... I getting a little too woo-woo for you, maybe? <laughs> Could be. It's That's pretty okay. widely distributed. It grows all over, you know, eastern Mexico, western Mexico, just not in the north. And then it's all over Central America and South America as well. Okay, but we know that it's because of the Cocos Plate, so we can we can thank the Cocos Plate when we're done with the video, you know. Maybe say, you just, to, just, to, just to be polite or some, something, you know? Of course. Yeah, so you, you, I've never, whenever I've seen these, and it's been three years probably since I saw my last, my last Zappos, you'll never see one, very rarely will you ever see one coming up by itself. Okay, you always see quite a few of them. That guy's not having a, looks like the bacteria kind of got to him. But they're just, they're one of the most incredible species. Very beautiful, very cool habitat, very cool ecology. Look at that stem, look at, oh shit. Okay, so stepping over this little puddle right here, you can see there's quite a few young ones emerging from the side of that dirt wall. God, they're so they're such a beauty. Oh my god. And look at this massive clump right there. Look at that. Got an undulating cap. Got an undulating margin right there. I'm gonna have to take pictures of these. Very fun, very fun fungi to draw. All fungi are kind of fun to draw, if you ask me. But this one, especially with the texture of that cap, or the texture of the stipe, and the uh how to the margin of that cap undulates. Oh my god! Look, all the trash too, and it, the zaps don't—they don't care. They're just doing, doing their thing, having a dandy old time. Wonder how many millions of years old this lineage is. This specific uh, species. This is a, this is a satharella. Yep. Just coming up like clumps. Okay, and tell us about the diagnostic features of this. Uh, this one. So Sotharella have dark purple brown spores. You see them in, in the gills here, and then they're extremely fragile. 
Uh, the stem is fragile, and when the cap breaks, it breaks very easily, and it really likes to break up into triangles. So, like, no matter how you break it, you always end up with these triangular sections of cap. And that's something that Sotherella always does. And again, these are just saprotrophs. Yep. Just eating organic material. Probably organic material that's quite old. It's had a while to decompose already, you think, or what? Yeah. Because it's already buried inside the uh, wall. Yeah, maybe there's secondary decomposers in the get this some fine of, out of here. Uh, primary thing. I already ate a bunch of the a bunch of it. You know, some mushrooms kinda come in later. After the wood's already pretty decomposed. Yeah. Ooh, what's that? You got something what's this guy over there? This one here. Uh this is armillaria. Yeah, it looks like armillaria. A little dimpled cat. Armillaria mexicana. Due to it's the, the same one, huh? Yeah, it's a, a fresher one. Due to the expanded base and the small size. As you can see, uh, as we continue down this uh, waterway, the habitat does not get any more forgiving. It, the habitat for this species is always so goddamn sketchy. God damn it. Slippery rocks, lots of mud, and very steep, uh, very steep heights. See, hopefully, you know, sometimes you just got to go down and you, ho you hope there's something to break your fall. And uh, you're just trying to, you know, Alan's in the bushes over there. We just came down. Very pleasant climate. Very humid, though. It's like uh, San Francisco on a very humid day. Okay, not, you know, we are high elevation. It's not, not like jungle. I mean, it's like a cool jungle. More like the Pacific Northwest is the climate here. Maybe a little bit warmer. Okay, now we just shimmy down another cliff. We are getting some very interesting rocks here. Kind of a geologic mishmash. Geologic mishmash. You know, got a mishmash of rocks and a mishmash of trash as well. Some yeah, we're of, the base of an active volcano. That would be a Popocatepetl. That volcano. You see a little plume coming out of it today? Did you oh, see that, Alan? No, I didn't look. That's cool. That's kind of nice. Okay, this looks good. This habitat looks good. Flattens out a little bit. Don't know how we're going to get back up, but here we go. So what, what are we looking at here? These are Cotylidia. God damn, they're weird. Yeah, they're very unusual. Oh, they got a stipe? They got yeah, a stipe? Yeah, a little bit of a stem. Maybe Cotylidia diaphana because they're white. And again, just saprotrophic, just eating yep. organic material that's accumulated in the uh, wall of the canyon. So we were we were out in that open canyon. Now we get to here where it's a little bit darker, and uh, you're never really going to find them exposed to full sun or even part sun, would you? No, they really like to be deep in the canyons, right by the water. Which is uh, what what's going on here? You could even see the blue in the cap. It's the slight bruise. It's right above a nasty puddle. And who's this guy over there? That bright that uh, bright guy. Oh, look at that. Is that oh. fluorescent that is? Oh. So that's Hyphaloma fasciculari. Why do the Hyphalomas do that? Do all of them do that? Yeah, they all do that. They have a chemical that converts ultraviolet light into visible light. And so they all fluoresce under UV. Yeah. And so these are saprotrophs or what are they? Yeah, they're saprotrophs. And it might be blown out if you can lower the exposure compensation. So oh, I can see, see it. That's, that's beautiful green color. Just like scorpions. Yeah, they're bright like scorpions. <laughs> Let's do it again. Yeah, Holy to, shit, look at it. Show it to me. Oh, that's good. God damn. Quite a bit of fungal diversity. We got more Zapatocorum. Right there, little pins. We got more trash. You can see it's just ensconced in that uh, just layer after layer of of landslide. You know, with the it's a little bit of garbage coming up. And what's this guy right here, Alan? This polypore here. If we look at the underside, it's nearly smooth. So that points in the direction of Flabellifora. Flabellifora. Okay, and again, mm -hmm. just a saprotroph. Yes. You can see it's on this really decayed log here. Oh shit! I didn't even realize that was a piece of wood. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this guy right here, this is foliota. With, and yeah. what's with those little projections coming off uh, the stipe and the cap right there? A lot of the foliota species have scaly stems and scaly caps. 
And then a lot of them are fluorescent and ultraviolet light, so you can see they're definitely reacting here. Okay, so this, these are all Zapatocorum too. They're just rather old. And what's going on? Is that a, another fungus attacking it or what? Yeah, that's a mold. So possibly a zygomycete or what do you think it could be? Yeah, it looks like a zygomycete. And you can see there's, it's kind of all over. And there's like these clusters here. And look back there, that's all Zapatocorum. Jesus Christ. Oh, look at this. This is all Zapatocorum too. <laughs> Jesus fuck. It's crazy. Yeah, it's so dark here. There's a ton. Oh, there's a ton coming up right there. There's some, oh, some wow, little pins yeah. coming up. There's a shoe in case anybody needs a, you know, Dr. Souls. What's it? What's it, you know, so you don't get your bunions or whatever this shit? Yeah, very dark here. It's starting to get dark outside, too, probably due to cloud cover, so hopefully it doesn't rain on us. I wonder how old these are. Maybe a, maybe three weeks? So what do you think? And these guys yeah, right here? Yeah, like three, three and a half weeks But they old. can get massive. That's like grapefruit-sized cap right there. Yeah. Yeah, there's hundreds of them in here. So this substrate they're on is just, it's, it's basically the mountain weathering away, so it's probably a volcanic base, and then there's just tons of organic material in it from ever many, you know, millions of years of uh, the forest being here and decaying and being washed away and uh, rocks weathering. So it's probably a very healthy soil, too. It's like a sandy, sandy, but you got some, uh, some black gold in there as well. That must be what the, zap, the zaps are eating. Look at these guys right there. God, that's a massive clump. So when they're young, they obviously, they probably have, oh shit. They probably got a couple compounds, uh, you know, that uh, can help fight off the, the, you know, molds and other fungi that would try to consume them but as they get old uh, they lose it as the mushrooms age they they lose those compounds maybe as they degrade and then they become susceptible but it's already done he's already probably released you know quite a few hundred million spores anyway so and these up there have not quite uh, gone yet very dark here incredibly dark in this this little enclave of the forest okay damien here just trimmed away some of uh I don't know if it's a salvia or asteraceae. There's plenty of uh, some sort of asteraceae, maybe a tithonia. Saw quite a few salvia species too. Nothing's flowering, so you can't really tell. But you could see how big these can get, hiding beneath uh, that cover. And they can get twice this size. You've saw, how, how big have you seen them? About a foot tall. You've seen foot tall psilocybes. Yep. So these zapatocorms are about six inches. About, yeah, it's about, I don't know, the size of my hand, maybe. Get those older ones back there. Holy hell. Look at it. One of the most beautiful Basidio carps you'll ever see. Look at that texture. Texture of the stipe. The wavy margins of the cap. Just coming up in this uh, very, uh, very wet forest. Yeah, there we go. It's starting to piss. I don't got a raincoat. I just got this little dinky umbrella. <clears throat> but I got some plastic bags. Do you need a bag? Put your stuff in a bag. You'll be fine. Okay, so it did start raining on us while we were in that uh, narrow canyon. Uh, and the narrow canyon did quickly start filling up with water. It was a little hairy, but it wasn't too bad, okay? Uh, you know, it's, you can see it's still raining. It died down for a little bit. But, uh, you know, it maybe filled up like a foot of water. And then, of course... All the slopes that we came down were now waterfalls and cascades, uh, so I had to just sketch, you know, sketchily climb up a uh, poison ivy covered cliff, grabbing out the tree branches and just kind of grasping for anything that would support my weight. I did fall on each shit a couple times, but it was worth it. The rest of them are still down there, but they're fine. I can hear them. You know, they're laughing and shit. Uh, it, and it did start, it stopped raining, it eased down a little bit. I just seen a guy go by, he was running his horses with his truck. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you have a good rest of the afternoon and you learn a thing or two. Uh, the Rumbes, Habitat, the Geology, the Mexican Transvolcanic Belt, all very interesting stuff. Okay, that's all I got for you. Have a good rest of the afternoon. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Now, see, they're, they're down there. I just see a bunch of bushes moving. You guys okay? Yeah. There's tons of uh, toxic codendron you get to walk through on your way up. So if you weren't sensitized yet, you're going to be sensitized now. Look at that. 
It's a tree. I never, I never paid attention to it before. Look at those inflorescences. Palmate leaves and then the little spikes coming up. How about that? The Toxicodendron radicans. All right. You could almost forgive it for containing so much urushiol. I'm covered in that shit. I, I was climbing up through a hillside of it.